In this learning objective, we have to compare between strong and weak acids using examples, particulate diagrams, and ionization equations. A strong acid is an acid that ionizes completely in water. The complete ionization of the strong acid is represented by a single-headed arrow. It's a strong electrolyte. It's an aqueous solution that conducts an electric current, and this is the meaning of electrolyte. When the electrical conductivity of a solution of a strong acid is tested, the light bulb glows brightly. These are some examples of strong acids that we have to know. On the other hand, we have the weak acids. A weak acid is an acid that partially ionizes in water. The partial ionization of the weak acid is represented by a double-headed arrow. It's a weak electrolyte. It's an aqueous solution that conducts an electric current. When the electrical conductivity of a solution of a weak acid is tested, the light bulb is dim. So as you can see here, it's bright and there it's dim. And that's how we can differentiate between a strong acid and a weak acid if we want to do like a small experiment. Examples, acetic acid, nitrous acid, carbonic acid, and phosphoric acid. These are examples of weak acids. A solution of a strong acid, HA, mainly contains H3O plus and A minus. So look at here, if this is the strong acid we're talking about, so it's going to completely dissociate in water and give me the hydronium ion or the hydrogen proton plus A minus, which is the conjugate base. So A minus is the conjugate base, H3O plus is the conjugate acid of the base, which was next to the acid, next to our strong acid, and in this case, uh, water, since we said from the first lesson it's an amphoteric species, it can act sometimes as a base or as an acid. And in this case, it's going to gain the H plus donated by the strong acid, and when it accepted, it will form the hydronium ion. Okay, so here we've got some examples of some acids that uh, completely ionizes in water. So HCl will give me H plus plus Cl minus. We can write this equation in a different way. We can also say that it's HCl plus H2O will give me H3O plus plus Cl minus. So both are correct ways of representing the complete dissociation of an acid in water, of a strong acid in water. Now, if we look at the other hand, you can clearly see that in this equation, we have a double-headed arrow. So here, it's actually a weak acid. We do not have a strong acid in this case. Why? Because of the double-headed arrow. And if you look at the graph, you're going to see that this partial dissociation, since we have a weak acid, is going to keep in solution an amount of the, uh, the Hb, and we're not only getting the conjugate base, B minus is the conjugate base of our main acid, it's going to also keep an amount of that acid that is not dissociated because it's a weak acid, so it's not going to completely dissociate in water. These are some examples of some dissociation equations. For example, for acetic acid, you can clearly see that it's going to give me the acetate ion plus a proton. For the nitrous acid, we're going to get the nitrite ion plus H+, plus, which is the proton. And here we've got more examples. This is a diprotic acid. If you remember, a diprotic acid is an acid that has two H pluses to be donated. And the last example, which is for phosphoric acid, it's a, a triprotic acid, so it has three H pluses to be donated. So in this case, each hydrogen ion will be donated at once and then we get, so in the first equation, we get the donation of the first hydrogen ion, and then uh, the conjugate base, HCO3 minus, will act now as an acid again and donate its H plus, and we'll be left with the carbonate ion. And here also in the phosphoric acid, which partially ionizes in three steps, we've got the H3PO4 will donate its first hydrogen, its first acidic hydrogen, and will form H2PO4 minus. Then the H2PO4 minus will donate the second hydrogen and will form HPO42 minus. And then the H2, HPO42 minus will give me the last hydrogen that uh, originates from the phosphoric acid and will uh, will get also the conjugate base PO43 minus. 
Now be careful guys, this ionization or dissociation happens in three steps because it's a triprotic acid. One more last remark over here. Since this is a full dissociation for a strong acid, then in this case, the ionization equilibrium position lies almost completely to the right. And remember, this is the right side. And here we've got the left side. Why completely to the right? Because it's um, with a percentage of 100% dissociation. So in this case, uh, we're going to say that the ionization equilibrium position lies almost completely to the right because the base H2O has a greater attraction for the H uh, plus ion. So the H2O has a greater attraction to the H plus ion that will be donated by the strong acid to uh, form the H3O plus hydronium ion and we'll be left with the A- minus as a conjugate base. Now if uh, we look at the ionization equilibrium position in the case of the weak acid it's going to lie almost far to the left because the conjugate base B- minus has a greater attraction for the H+, plus, so it's going to always react with the H+, plus, uh, to reform, to reform the Hb, okay, because this is a reversible reaction, as you can see, with a double-headed arrow. So once we form the B-, minus, the B- minus will react with the H+, plus from the hydronium ion to reform the acid Hb, which is a weak acid. In this learning objective, we have to define acid ionization constant, Ka, while writing the ionization constant expression for different weak acids. The acid ionization constant, Ka, is the value of the equilibrium constant expression for the ionization of a weak acid. And generally, this is how we represent it. If the reaction is HA will give me H plus plus A minus, then in this case, we're going to put the products on top, as we learned in previous equi equilibrium lessons. So you put the products on top and the reactants at the bottom. So product in the numerator, reactant in the denominator, and here we just see HA as a reactant. Okay, so we're going to just put HA. Or it can be HA aqueous plus H2O liquid will give me A minus aqueous plus H3O plus aqueous. But in this case, since H2O is a liquid, I'm not allowed to include it in my equilibrium expression. I can only use the aqueous or the gaseous substances, and here we just have aqueous or liquid. So the liquid will be cancelled out, okay, it will not be a part of my equilibrium expression. Now be careful guys, whether you use the first equation or the second type of dissociation or ionization equations, you're going to get the same result. So at the end it's the same thing because you can never include a liquid in your expression. Now be careful, it's always like this, you have the H plus times the conjugate base over the weak acid. So that's why here this is the general formula of a Ka and A stands for an acid or acidity, okay, so K of the acid. Now, in this objective, we have to relate the strength of uh, weak acids to the numerical values of Ka. So, as you can see, we have different weak acids. This is a list of weak acids with their dissociation constants. So, Hf is 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And don't forget, the equilibrium constant is unitless. So, 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Here for uh, the hydrocyanic acid, 6.2 times 10 to the power of negative 10. For the phosphoric acid, as you can see, it's a triprotic acid, so you have to take Ka1, Ka2, and Ka3, uh, because for each dissociation equation or ionization equation, okay, as you can see, you have three equations, equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3, you've got a different constant. Now be careful, the weaker the acid, the smaller its Ka value. So this is a very important point. The weaker the acid, the smaller is its Ka value. And don't forget, for the polyprotic acid, uh, acids, the Ka value decreases for each successive ionization. So as you can see, the Ka1 is bigger than Ka2, and Ka2 is also bigger than Ka3. So Ka1... Ka2, and the least one or the smallest value goes for Ka3 for the third equation over here. 
This is a direct application of what we have just learned. It says the acid ionization constants Ka of three different acids, Hx, Hy, and Hz, are given below. Which of the following correctly lists the three acids in decreasing order of their acid strength? Don't forget, guys, when we say in decreasing order, this means from the highest to the lowest, okay? Or from the strongest acid to the weakest acid. And in this case, we just have to follow the numbers or the numerical values and check which one is the strongest. So the strongest will have the biggest Ka value and the weakest will have the smallest Ka value. Okay, so here the highest Ka value is for Hi, so H Hy should be the strongest. Then the, the second one is for Hx, and then 10 to the power of negative 7, which is for Hz. And the answer is B in this case. In this question, we have uh, a figure that shows the particulate diagrams of the ionization process of three different acids. So this is the ionization process of acid Hx, HY and HZ. It says identify the strongest acid in part A and justify your answer. Now the strongest acid here is the one that has dissociated the most. And if we look carefully, if we start for example with uh, the first acid, we started with one, two, three, so we're just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, so we have six molecules. Out of the six molecules, six got dissociated because we do not see any H, uh, Hx molecules anymore. The Hx molecules are the black and uh, the black and the white molecules. We don't see any two atoms that are still together. Now, if I look at the second one, Hy, we started also with six molecules, but we still have at the end one, two, and three left. Only three got dissociated and three were left. So this is a weak acid, by the way. It's not a strong acid. Here, this is a strong acid since all of its molecules got dissociated. If we look also at the last one, you can clearly see that we started also with, the, with uh, six HZ, okay? But we ended up having only two dissociated, okay? So if you look at here, you have this and that. Only two got dissociated and there are four that are left. So only two got dissociated, okay? They got separated, they got ionized, all right? So this is the weakest, by the way. Now we, uh, we almost uh, answered all of the questions. So if we go back here, it says the identify the strongest acid. It's of course Hx because it has completely dissociated in the aqueous solution. The weakest is uh, Hz because it was the weakest because it did not ionize completely. It dissociated the least or it ionized the least. If we want to arrange the acid in increasing, increasing order of their strength. So we're gonna start from the lowest to the highest, you're going to start from Hz, then the second uh, stronger uh, one is Hy, and the strongest is the Hx. In this question, we have to use the following diagram that represents two acids, Ha and Hb, to answer questions A and B. Um, if you look at the first diagram, you can clearly see the single-headed arrow, and here we have a double-headed arrow. Ha is the first acid, Hb is the second acid. And uh, then we can see that we had, we've got H plus and A minus. A minus is the conjugate base of this acid. And B minus here is the conjugate uh, base of the HB as an acid. But be careful. At the end in this diagram, you can see that we still have some HB particles. And you can see that in the particulate diagrams. If you start counting um, in the first part, HA, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All of them got dissociated, got ionized, got separated, and formed the H plus and the A minus. On the other hand, we also started with 10 Hb particles, but not all of these particles got uh, ionized or dissociated, only two of them, and we still have eight left at the end of this reaction. Uh, so this means that Hb is the weak acid over here. It's not the strong acid because it did not completely ionize in water. 
all right so as you can see here we still have the same particles one two three four five six seven eight oh even nine so it's only one that got uh, completely dissociated only one you started with 10 and only one got dissociated here we started with 10 and all of them got dissociated all the particles of this acid write the ionization equations for ha and hb so in this case ha a single headed arrow straight away h plus plus a minus on the other hand for hb you have a double headed arrow so hb will give me h plus plus b minus with a double headed arrow because this is a weak acid apparently Second question, it says, which is a strong acid, HA or HB? Justify your answer. Of course, it's the HA because it has completely, so completely, it completely ionized in water, okay? In this learning objective, we have to compare between strong and weak bases using examples, particulate diagrams, and ionization equations. So it's exactly the same concept of strong acids and weak acids, but here we're dealing with bases instead of acid. So again, if you have a strong base, you're going to use a single-headed arrow. If you have a weak base, you have to use the double-headed arrow. Okay, this is a strong electrolyte. It means it has a complete ionization in water and it conducts electricity very well. On the other hand, a weak base is a weak electrolyte, and this is something like ammonia. In water, it's going to give me its conjugate acid, NH4+, plus, plus the hydroxide ion OH-, which will be considered the conjugate um, a base of H2O, which is here acting as an acid. So it's basically like this, base plus acid will give me the conjugate acid, NH4+, plus, and the conjugate base, OH-. Don't forget, guys, that NH3 is considered as a base because it's an H plus acceptor. So you started from here, NH3, and then it became NH4+. Plus. So what you did, you accepted the H+, plus, and that's why it's considered a base, according to the Bronsted, uh, to the Bronsted uh, definition. H2O is an acid because it's it's an H plus donor, it donated a H plus. In this learning objective, we have to identify the relationship between the strength of an acid and its conjugate base, and the strength of a base and its conjugate acid. And it's very simple. The stronger an acid is, the weaker its conjugate base, and the stronger a base is, the weaker its conjugate acid. So it's just an inverse relationship. In this learning objective, we have to defi define a base ionization constant, which is the value of the equilibrium constant expression for the ionization of a weak base. Since it's a weak base, so we have a double-headed arrow that will be used in the equation. And in this case only, you can talk about the equilibrium constant expression. Again, it's very similar to what we learned in the case of acids, but here you're going to keep the conjugate acid on top times hydroxide ion concentration over the concentration of the weak base. This is a very good example of the weak base ammonia. So ammonia is aqueous. H2O liquid should not be included in my final expression. NH4 plus is aqueous, so we have to include it. Also, the hydroxide ion is aqueous and it must be included. So we're going to end up having NH4 plus times OH minus, because these are the products, over ammonia. And remember, guys, in case you have any coefficient next to any reactant or product, then its concentration in the equilibrium constant expression must be raised to a power that is equal to the same coefficient. In this learning objective, we have to relate the strength of, of weak bases to the numerical values of Kb. And like in the case of acids, the value of Kb indicates whether reactants or products are favored at equilibrium. The weaker the base, the smaller is its Kb. So it's exactly the same as uh, we learned in the case of acids. So for example, if I want to compare these uh, two bases, the, the ammonia and the methyl amine, then in this case, the one that has a smaller Kb, okay, uh, is going to be a weaker base, okay, a smaller Kb, weaker base. And I see that the Kb of NH3 is actually smaller than that of the methyl amine, 
than the Kb of the methyl amine at CH3 and H2. So this one is now a stronger base, okay? But it's not a strong base since we are dealing with Ks for them. So they are still weak bases, but if we are comparing these two weak bases, which one is a stronger? The stronger here is the methyl amine, not the ammonia. Now, in this diagram, you can clearly see uh, the relative strength of common acids and bases. So increasing strengths of acids and um, over here, as you go up, you start with uh, hypochlorous acid. And this is the weakest amongst the acids we have on this list. The strongest is hydrochloric acid. Here then comes, of course, the neutral solution. And then after that, you start with the weakest bases and you end up with the highest one or the strongest uh, base over here on the list, which is potassium hydroxide.